Okay, everybody, I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough of the new Jambo. I just drove <laughs> from Salt Lake City, Utah to the middle of Kansas. It was a 14 and a half, 15 hour drive to pick this baby up. Um, I didn't break it up at all, so that's kind of why I'm <laughs> regretting the drive, because I literally drove straight there to the guy's house, picked it up, and drove straight back. And uh, it was... It was a nightmare, but I'm happy now that I'm back and I've got the pit. So, again, this is the Jambo backyard model, and it is a behemoth. I couldn't tell from YouTube videos and everything, but when I got to the gentleman's house to pick it up, I was almost stunned just at how, how large it is, especially the, the firebox on this thing is just enormous. See, just to show you... This is Gabriel, my son, he's six. And Gabriel, is this thing huge or what? It's massive. So big, huge grill. And I'm just kind of open some stuff up. One of the main reasons I got this, uh, or wanted a new cooker was to do uh, some whole pigs. And the divided chamber definitely makes it maybe a little bit harder, but and I was worried about that, but now that I've got it and just see how much actual real estate is inside of here, it would definitely be easy enough to slide a pretty good sized pig straight in through one of the chambers. Obviously not ideal, so if that's one of your big things, the size of the doors and stuff could make that a little bit more difficult. And you've got just the one probe, which is center pit. Uh, according to the guy I bought it from, these do really well at holding the temperatures all the way across the chamber and that's basically just because of how they designed the system there's no tuning plate or or anything like that with the coming out of the firebox so just the primary heat comes right up in over the top so uh, adjustable on the smokestack i hadn't seen any of these on the other ones i've seen i don't know if you just kind of jb welded that on there or something to make it a little easier if you broke off the piece i don't know but it works so obviously the damper there um, this is the removable handle for picking it up and i seriously when i first saw him start to put that on there i was like how in the heck are you going to lift this thing but yeah just because of where they have the wheels it's actually pretty easy surprisingly to move around um, i'd had a yoder YS640 for a long time and I didn't have the competition card. I ended up mounting it onto a trailer just because it was so hard to move around my yard, like impossible um, because of how it sits. And this is probably, it's almost twice the weight actually of the YS640 and actually um, much easier to move it around, not just because of the large wheels, but again, you've got the weight of the, of the actual fire box uh, on the other side of the wheels so it's not as heavy as you would think let's kind of do a quick walk around here but yeah she's really clean and and really pretty so a couple of like marks or something on here where maybe he'd been setting some some hotel pans or whatever so i'll take a deep dive and uh do some other videos once once we burn it in but i haven't even lit this thing up yet i literally just took it off of the trailer a minute ago all right we're back here with the jambo i'm um, sorry about the audio in the other one i filmed i this one may be the same it's kind of windy and i haven't figured out whether it's just the wind or whether i had a loose cable but um, i've started a sort of a test burn on the jambo today and I um, got it up to temperature like easy as pie. Of course, it's a really nice kind of mild day today. I basically had it all burning. I started with a really good bed of B&B &B charcoal briquettes. And then um, this is now my second. And then this log accidentally caught fire because um, I put it way too close. But that was kind of my on deck waiting log so before that one caught um, and just kind of with how it is basically the damper on this apparently the the gentleman I purchased from didn't met didn't mess with it at all it's set to kind of what the factory was but 
you would basically just screw these in or out. I mean, it looks scratched up, so I'd be surprised if he hadn't touched it, but not, not a big deal either way. So um, where it's set at right now, um, and just to kind of show you again, those are the, the intake holes on the other side, and you're just screwing that in or out of there. Um, with one split on there at a time, um, and you could kind of see what I was talking about in size. And I just have some, see I told you it was windy. <laughs> so I just have some kiln dried uh, hickory here. Um, with just the one split on there, we've got up to, and I've got, I'm just testing the jambo pits. That they, it's a really nice tell true that they've got on there. <clears throat> and it was sitting at 250, and then I've got my Thermoworks uh, dot here, and I've been moving it around the chamber, and it was 250 almost everywhere in the whole chamber, which I was really surprised by. Again, the previous gentleman had told me it's pretty even across the chamber because of the style here. The again, the most of the pits, your your firebox is set a lot lower, and it's coming up below the cooking grates with some sort of tuning plate. In this one, that is the opening to the to the chamber there. So whether that's kind of part of it, and then this does have the sort of mini collector, um, not quite the full kind of Texas style collector, but for the bottom of the stack, which which does come out at great level, um, and so just seems to move over nice enough or pull perfectly so that the temperature stays pretty even. Um, it did jump up to that 275, uh, almost 300 um, because of that other log that had fallen on there. And so far I've just left the, the damper, the exhaust damper kind of at a 45 degree angle, which again is, I'm just kind of going off of uh, some of the recommendations of the guy I purchased it from. So keeping it there, even some of the times, I'll, you know, some of the other higher end pits don't even have a damper. So potentially just may mess around with leaving that all the way open, uh, but we'll we'll kind of see. So again, all by itself, it was it was basically right on 250, 255 without any effort at all it got there really fast and um, through three different logs it stayed exactly right at that so um, now with that other one lit again it's closer to 300 but um, I did just add just now like literally you can see my tools back there this other one of these little screw in uh, type pro ports um, so uh, this one's not running through it because unfortunately these Thermoworks ones have a really fat piece at the base of the probe so it doesn't fit all the way through. These doors do jam that up really bad and this door over here isn't leaking smoke like literally at all even though there's no gaskets but this one um, when I put in new wood it's leaking a little bit. One thing I was surprised by on these Jambos it really doesn't like bug me. Let me grab something to... Oh, here, I'll just grab a stick here. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem, but most of the time on these pit pits, especially when this high end, you'd, you, they'd be like angle iron on these, and it's just sort of flat bar. Like, you can't even tell what I'm doing here, but um, it's just kind of surprising how skinny these grates are. And like I said, I can't think of a situation where it would be a problem. <laughs> Maybe like with a whole pig in there or something like that could be problematic. It's more just kind of a side note. Um, there are a lot of things on this pit as far as build wise that um, again, it's just really custom. The welds are amazing and everything. It's just kind of like some little details like how this is attached is a little goofy. Um, not really in a bad way. It just kind of has a real homemade feel in that regard. And then I did look at a bunch of the others, and they do have this little, um, what's at like literally a 7 16th. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm really trying to get get that on there. 7 16th lug that's on the end of that. Um, which again, it's not a bad thing, it just kind of has a 
more of a homemade feel to, to some of those things. So, but I'm um, just pointing out details because there's not a lot of really deep dive videos on there. Um, with the damper on this, it's hard to say what I'd, what I'd prefer. I think this works out good to the point where you could uh, adjust it open or close so your pit's running like exactly where you want it to once it preheats and then you could just a lot of the like, higher end pits you just are almost always just kind of using your door as your temperature uh, adjustment and i did run it for just a little while setting just like that and it settled at about 275 and it just hovered at 275 it took about 15 minutes to get there from from the 250 it was sitting at but so you can kind of mess with that the way that you, you feel like you want to but anyway uh sorry this is like so long-winded i just wanted to go over some of the some of the initial things i've noticed oh the other actually there's one more thing which is first of all i love these handles because it does they do kind of naturally insulate because they're they're only kind of hovering on that. I love the roll on them. The one thing that's kind of the downside is when you come up uh, to this point, you kind of end up to where you touch your arm there if you don't kind of transition that carefully. Let me do that so that I can actually, you can actually see it. Um, but you can see like, because they're, they're like even with it, and most of the ones you'd hang down a little bit, so it would be nice if instead of sticking straight out or almost straight out, if they'd kind of ran this down so that they were sitting, you know, a little bit lower. So I'm going to do some dimension stuff here real quick. So this is an, a fully insulated firebox. Um, there's at least a couple of inches. Oh, it's hard to see. You can kind of see more on that. There's probably two and a half inches of of in insulation um so you know this the thickness on the steel here uh, on this chamber is on this other stuff so again this is exterior dimensions on this with insulation on the box so we're 20 and a half inches uh, and 24 inches this way. Um, your total length, uh, it is 48 inches on the cooking chamber and with the cooking chamber and the box, we're 67 and a half inches. Just keep in mind, you got some more distance with the handle and then the, the smokestack sticking out. Um, this smokestack, uh, the, the, I guess, effective or what we call developed length and plumbing, uh, is 32 inches, which is exactly, uh, two thirds of the length of the chamber, which is the, I guess, preferred calculation, uh, based on whatever online calculators. And I know Aaron Franklin talks about it in his, in his videos, but, um, two thirds of the of the chamber length. When I first got it, I was like, I'm surprised they don't have a taller smokestack on this because it seemed like it was only about half of the of the chamber length. But it is the full it is the full three quarters. So um, the barrel is 24 inches um, across, which is kind of your sort of your effective. cooking because the grates do essentially go end to end so we're just shy 23 and a half inches about there and then again almost the 48 inside um, the front stainless shelf is 12 and a half inches and again it's the full 48 inch length so um, these wheels if you're curious on those they are 10 inches um, so yeah those are some of the dimensions I just kind of wanted to go over oh the other only other dimension I guess that I can look at your your collector here uh, is six and a half inches 
And then this is a, looks like uh, five inch outside diameter. 